Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Take 5, the podcast where we take a cinema legend and then take five of their films to highlight their excellence and range. My name is Austin Luger. My name is Eric Martindale. And this is our third week on the Gene Kelly Five. Previously we covered American in Paris and Singing in the Rain, two beloved Hollywood films that everyone likes. And next week we have uh, <laughs> The Young Girl of the Rochefort and Xanadu. But this week we have It's Always Fair Weather. So we're now three weeks into this Gene Kelly Five. It has been more problematic than previous fives we have. This is also kind of, whereas those two films we discussed were Gene Kelly kind of going with the Hollywood spirit and making these MGM musicals that are uh, expensive and ridiculous and giant in scope, this is the one where he started to really kind of butt heads because it was described as a more cynical musical. It's the story of three soldiers who are best friends during the war. They come back from the war and decide at a bar that they are going to prove to the bartender that their friendship will hold by returning to this bar ten years later and, and showing him how great of friends they are. Ten years later, through a musical montage, we discover that their lives did not turn out how they thought. They were not all having the dream jobs they had. In fact, all three of them are pretty miserable. And it's looking at that day of them reconnecting, not really liking each other, and being forced to kind of reassess their lives. You know, a joyful, happy musical. Uh, if that were the actual story of the musical, I think it'd have been a good. It would have been a good movie. Um, as the movie, <laughs> as the movie stands, um, uh, as it is, because then it has to get Gene Kellyified, um, and which will it further accents my problems with Gene Kelly as a as a, an actor, as a director. And the influences he may or may not have had on the scripts. Well, we'll just say he did have on the scripts. Mm -hmm. There are rules to Gene Kelly once he's in your film, at least the ones that we're covering here. He has to get the prettiest girl. He has to always be standing in the middle. He has to smile unnecessarily. He has to make creepy passes on women and then never get any rebuttal towards him for it. Which is very similar to him here. Oh, yes, I forgot. He's also smarter than you, too. Um, he knows he, you may be the smartest person in the, in the room, which is the case in this movie, where we literally establish that the female lead in this film is the most brilliant person in the world until she's won up by Gene Kelly, who corrects her that one of her Shakespeare plays was wrong. It's the only error she has in the whole film, right? Yeah. That she got, it was, she said The Tempest instead of As You Like It. Right. And. It, Two problems with that. One, I feel like she would know the difference. I don't feel like she would make that Those mistake. are very different plays. I feel, yes. Um, uh, which is, it's rather silly that Gene Kelly has to have a line where he one ups her. So, anyway, the film in the very beginning started out very, very promising for me. I, I really like this idea of people coming back from war. You know, you are who you are over there. You come back, and they're elated to be home. They're elated to be alive. It's it's really kind of joyful. And they sing this very, very beautiful song about how they'll be friends till they're dead. Like, this, is, this is the drunk song, right? Yeah, the drunk song. So I, I do have a couple of flaws with this film, not as many as you, but I do think this is actually perhaps the greatest achievement of Gene Kelly as an experimental director because – there are a few numbers in this that are just very, very clever. Mm -hmm. And to have them drunkenly dance, I mean, obviously it's still Hollywood drunk. Mm -hmm. But it is different movements. And to watch the three of them actually had a different kind of camaraderie with that whole sequence, I enjoyed their... They spend most of it with a trash can lid on their foot. Yeah. Um, super clever, super fun. Would not fit in Singing in the Rain. But I thought this was really fun. Yeah, and when there and when it can be serious, it it drives home the point. Serious, like they they really do they really do feel this way, which is further accented. Like like, like just just the premise in general is really neat. Like take the musical aspect out of it. Take Gene Kelly out of it. These guys are at war. They come back from World War II. They they then go their separate ways. They agree to meet up this bar. You know, Facebook doesn't exist at that time. It's literally just a promise that they'll meet each other there that one day. No one thinks any of them's going to show up. They all show up. They're all there together. And then the wheels completely fall off the film. There is a nice scene there where they're realizing they're different people, which is all really great, but it all happens so quickly that the plot of the film is wrapped up in about 35 minutes. And then it re eh, it's probably unfair. 
the movie hits pause after 35 minutes and then comes back to the plot for the last 10 minutes. Well, it, the, the middle part to me is interesting because I have some, some positive things to say about kind of earlier in it, but I do think that it's a missed opportunity to have them split up like they did. Mm-hmm. Clearly, the idea was structurally for them to each individually kind of realize that even with the annoyance of their friends, they don't like as much anymore, they still aren't the person that they wanted to be. And just the memory of their past kind of makes them reassess oh, wow, my job is so boring. Yeah. Oh, wow. I am a womanizer who works for the mob. Okay. Uh, and, and Gene, Nothing that stops no, some womanizing. No, no. no, Gene Kelly's song was just trolling you. This movie came out 50 years ago. Yeah. But when Gene Kelly sang a song called I Like Me, yeah. I went, Eric just ripped his hair out. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do, Gene. Yeah. I, but, I, 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 I knew that. But, I mean, the, the way they don't like it was so interesting because they had another moment of Gene Kelly's experimentation as a director. I love them all at a booth, and oh, that's the, great! The the song yeah. is happening essentially in voiceover as mm-hmm. they do close ups, and they don't do a lot of cuts. They actually mm-hmm. do kind of like pan over. Yeah. Now you hear the the music of them hating the other two, and get to just kind of watch them listen to the song that they probably can't hear on stage. And, and you know why that song works really well as opposed to every other song in any of the musicals we've really seen to this point is because it's all based on it's further further deepening and exploring the relationships of the characters and it's advancing the plot. Mm -hmm. It's telling us something that we don't necessarily know. It's giving us expository information about themselves and then we can then theorize on their characterization at this point. Is their disliking their friend just a reflection of themselves Mm -hmm. or is this really what they've all become? Or is it all, all of the above? This is this is song that is not emphasizing the plot. It's it's moving the plot, yeah. which has been relatively absent in any of the previous two films. I will say um, that in this film, it it's done it did a better job of that. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like this film was more on point as far as that's concerned because that's been my biggest annoyance about the Gene Kelly. This Gene Kelly experiment, it seems like we're doing now on here, because it's just that I don't feel like most of the songs are necessary. I don't feel like almost any of them are in American in Paris, and only about 60% of them are in um, Singing in the Rain. So this started off great, and then it has to turn into A Pretty Woman Enters, and Gene Kelly Gets the Pretty Woman, and that just goes on for entirely too long. Well, it, that part to me is less convincing. I don't have a, a big problem with it, but she is supposed to be as much of a catalyst as the others to him changing his ways, because this film seems to be at, at odds with itself. It has this kind of great premise and great kind of the, the cynical premise, but then it keeps trying to be an MGM musical. Absolutely. And yeah. when it does kind of break from that or add to it, I think to me the greatest achievement he did as a inventive director was the number when the three of them are kind of in the middle of the film are reassessing where they are. Mm-hmm. And they all kind of essentially do a, a number together, but they're all in three different locations. And it's a split screen in three parts. That is so impressive because I don't know how they did it because they are three dancers in sync with each other perfectly, but those are three different sets. Yes. Those have to be three different times. Yeah. And yet it is so perfectly done. And they even just like move the camera in the same way mm-hmm. just to kind of show you because they begin with having um, no lights on for two of them. So you think it's just like a, just a camera trick where like okay they're all in the same room but Gene Kelly's the one lit right and they kind of and I remember them. having that experience when I watched yeah. it as well thinking that and then they like you see the two different backgrounds mm-hmm. and then they even tease you further by moving the camera left and right for all three of them to go no 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 these are three different places um, and the way that sort of the the progression of that is is pretty neat because I I. I I, I I gotta assume it was intentional that at first you're going to think that that you're in the same room. And, Absolutely, and that's and, and Gene Kelly definitely does this a lot in other films. Like he presents you with scenarios where you're going, I wonder how he's kind of doing this. Particularly when you get to sort of the bombastic set pieces that 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 exist in these films. I'm never going to complain about Gene Kelly dancing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it goes on too long in an American in Paris. There isn't a super dream sequence in this one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, where was that? I was waiting on that. God, those are my favorite parts of the other movies. He, um, he did roller skate, which is pretty indulgent. Yeah. Oh, he did roller skate, which is indulgent. But I kind of like that. Like yeah. I like seeing Gene Kelly 
if that's what we're going to be about, mm-hmm. I mean, if this is just Gene Kelly masturbating, mm-hmm. then let's have him do what he is truly great at, which is dancing. Yeah. And dancing and moving. He's a good singer. He's a great dancer. He's a terrible actor. He, let me I, tell you. I do find him charming. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, obviously you find him charming. The whole rest of the world find him <laughs> charming. This is, do you like Tina Fey? Yeah. Okay. That's probably right here. Tina Fey's the Gene Kelly of the day when it comes to it comes to acting. Beloved success. I know. Well, okay. <laughs> well, let me see. Ever watch a Tina Fey credit card commercial? No, they're terrible, yes. They're terrible. And you know why they're terrible? Because everything's an in-joke where she looks at the camera and winks. That's that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Gene Kelly is so aware of the camera. He, it's like he knows which tooth it's shining brightest when he looks into it. Everything gears towards the camera as opposed to the actual plot. He, re, he is... You can see the performance. Like, you can see, that was a zinger, wasn't it? Guys at home? And Mm -hmm. kind of like a wink, nudge, nudge. And that type of indulgence, uh, just to me, comes off as buffoonery. I I, I think think this film has some self-awareness about that. Because it all... It it, it does. It does. But in, 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 in the same way that Grindhouse has self-awareness that doesn't make it a good good movie necessarily and we could debate that but but i i gr- that's great that it's self-aware and everything but it doesn't really mean anything if it's not affecting the actual character if it's affecting gene kelly and if it's about gene kelly i'm not i don't care about that that's not the actual story of the movie the character should be affected by this. This is not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you can say, you can say this is my legacy picture, but you can't say every movie you do is your legacy <laughs> picture. You know what I mean? And that's the thing is when he's acting, it's, it comes down to that. This isn't this isn't exploring Don Draper if he falls on his face in season four of Mad Men. It's not that deep. It, it it's just kind of like I well, feel hoodwinked into believing this. That's why I'm stuck with this is to me a rather good film, not a an excellent film, because I think there are elements of looking at Gene Kelly and the MGM musicals, who are just kind of so intertwined at this point, as noticing their falsehoods in a way. Because this whole uh, Fen plot is centered around for most of it how someone found this premise to be very cute of the three to come back and I think it's been a live TV production. Mm-hmm. And you get this kind of, you know, Mel, uh, Madeline, you know, doing this big number. It's very fun. But even before then, she's going, I, I hate doing this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and this show is not um, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. It, it doesn't, the live TV show does not turn out well. Whereas the scene in the rain, when the live thing goes wrong, is to expose someone who is... Um, a fraud or cruel, this is exposing the whole concept of the forced um, relationship to not work and to have an idea of soldiers and um, fake people on screen. Those two are not connected. I just realized they sounded like they were (laughs) when I said it aloud. It's it's the idea of of taking real complicated people and making them two-dimensional on screen and that's what is the downfall of this show. And also, then it thematically, interestingly, uses the camera to expose the mobsters for who they really are. Yeah, okay. So that was really interesting to me mm-hmm. because it was Gene Kelly playing to a camera playing to a camera. Yeah. It was like it, it, it was like sun through a magnifying glass. It was, Your nose are day bleed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was unbelievable. Um, it was just so funny because it, it's like overacting, overacting. It's okay within the context of the film, but all of a sudden he's Nick Bottom from uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, but that's the one he started to admit his flaws of the character, which, bringing another film, is just an obvious moment. That doesn't happen in Gene Kelly movies. There's no point in the last well, it's two because films. he's not flawed. In yeah. his own eyes, he's never flawed. And this until film, this film. And this is one thing. This is a really interesting film that is comes so many things. The that's why it's a bit trickier when you have kind of the perfect romance and whatnot because it seems to contradict that. Luckily to me, I think this is one of the most developed you know, female characters uh, because she's just. But the end, she tanks the ending though. The ending is so phoned in. Why does she show up at the bar at the end? I don't know. 
like everyone it, because Gene Kelly's <laughs> got to have a girl on his arm at the end. That yeah. that is why, and that that's very that's very frustrating to me. The movie's about these guys. Mm-hmm. These guys fall apart. She enters into uh, the subplot as the kick off the mousetrap to get them back together. Mm-hmm. She's the ball on the game mousetrap. Mm-hmm. They get back together again in the, together at the end in a very, very, very cool scene. I mean, it's it's coming back together, and I get it. And they find the dollars they put in the lamp and everything, mm-hmm. and everything works out great. And then she shows up. There was no indication earlier in the film that she was actually liking him. She was using him to get him on the TV show. Yeah. They kind of show... Well, she saw him on TV, right? So she saw him admitting he was an asshole. That's the first thing. The first thing, like, he, well, I, well yeah. I will say, okay, that that that's a little deeper than it takes for the girl in singing in the rain to fall in love with him. So I'll mm-hmm. give him credit for that. Yeah, he, she, he didn't just get her a job. Um, but it, it just, I felt like when she shows up there, it's kind of beneath that character to do that. She's she's being pursued by Gene Kelly. She never pursues him in the film, and I just mm-hmm. don't felt like I didn't feel like that made sense for her to show up there, other than to just say. It things come full circle because his wife goes off with another man at the beginning of the film. So now he gets this at the end. So I just don't s- think it was. I'm going to say why I think she did that. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I think this is what the film put in its screenplay for a reason. Okay. okay. Well, it, it put it in there so Gene Kelly could get a girl at the end. Oh no, no I'm saying that that is the structure. That is that yeah. is okay. Um, oh, the same writers of Sing in the Rain. So everyone got back together. Yeah. Um, yeah. So her in the cab with him at the very beginning where she says, men are intimidated by me because I'm so smart and all these kind of things. And he goes, I don't get scared off easily. And then she basically tries to like shoot him away by just doing like crazy science things, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when she does Shakespeare, then talks some more, talks some more. And he goes, I think I'm still interested in you because she's intelligent. Because that, that, to me, that but I'm like, smarter. I think. The same with the script play uh, saying that okay. I don't fully agree with it. Like that's what he's doing because okay. he, this is now someone who is um, someone interesting, someone he can like get a lot from. And then when he corrects her on Shakespeare, because she did mention in the cab that a lot of it is just trivia trickery that she isn't super passionate about it, but she's kind of memorizes certain facts, which is what she does with the, the boxing guys later. Mm-hmm. Um, I think again, according to the screenplay. Him correcting her is the is her seeing someone not be afraid of her intelligence, but engaging in it and listening and challenging her like she's challenging him. Then why didn't he say it immediately? Because she was talking. <laughs> she was talking really fast in that scene. It wasn't just so G. Kelly can have a cool moment where he just oh, it was a drop, away. drops the mic and walks away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, that, that, was, that reminded a, me of another great asshole in, in cinema, uh, Peter Venkman. Yeah. By the fountain. Like, he's just waiting for the good line to walk away. <laughs> yeah, but what's great about Peter Venkman is that he, he's not a scientist. He's not a very good one. He's a terrible scientist. Mm-hmm. There's no mistaking that. He's gotten by from the help of his friends. That's a self... There's a there's a degrading factor to that when he belittles people. It, he, he's great at sarcasm and, mm-hmm. and, and it works, and that's how he affects the dynamic. Gene Kelly wins. Gene Kelly's Egon Ray. He's everything he needs to be to be the victor. Um, of course, what you said is the reason. I, I, here's my worry. My worry is that people will think that like people listening to this will think that like oh I just don't understand musicals or I don't I don't get that 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 that's not the case. I like good musicals. I think I think Singing in the Rain's okay. I think it's overrated, but I think it's okay. I think it's made worse by Gene Kelly. I just I'm not whatever he did with that smile and that stare or whatever. That just doesn't that doesn't I don't feel anything when that happens. It feels like a shtick. When he dances and he moves, which in the next movie we'll, we'll get to parts where I felt I felt moved by that because that character primarily is dancing when he's on the screen. Of course, he's smiling because Gene Kelly, and that's fine. People smile. Also, Dust Bowl next week. Everyone's smiling in that movie the entire time. Yeah, it's like, true. It's, 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 a, it, it, it's almost like the Joker gassed the whole movie. Everyone's smiling. <laughs> Everyone is smiling. And it's a very, very, it's, 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 it's a much happier movie than, than this film. But, but, but I don't think this character, like, 
Yes, that is the Gene Kelly, the first two that we've reviewed. This one, I mean, I thought it was so interesting that when the kind of happy ending at the bar, they're all happy, they get the money, they're closing out, whatnot. But all they can discuss is what they did at the war and what their silly, like, Joe Sargent was like and whatnot. They're... Their lives aren't fixed. This isn't a day that he's alive. They're all still. They may have. An it gives awakening. an illusion that they're fixed. Yeah. Okay. There's awakening, an awakening, sure. but they're okay. still referring like, to like nostalgia of, of being happy about who they used to be. But the film is kind of from and saying they aren't those men anymore. See, I didn't get that. I got that they forgot that they were those men. They forgot, but so now they the, are different. So their future could be a blend, but you you can't be that. Ten year younger person tomorrow. You can't. You can't. But I think it was, most of the jobs are fucked. Too. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, that's true too. But 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 the one guy, the the tall friend, he uh, he's my favorite character in the film. Um, his wife is leaving him because he's not the man he used to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she sees him do this heroic thing on national TV, which when you see the film is. Not all that interesting, but okay, fine. I guess now they're. I mean, it's again. kind of crazy that this happened. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> the three soldiers uh, put tables down and busted mobsters. Yeah, <laughs> and no one. There's no police, but you know, it's just um, maybe the police didn't show up. Actually, I don't remember. Um, but but then he talks to his wife again. And she's like, "Oh yeah, you know, you're you're the man that I remember you being." And I feel like um, there, there's hope for some of the future, but I think like it's. It's not perfect. It's not happily wrapped up. No one's flying the car in the sky. I like Greece. It, it's no. The, yeah. it, to me, it, it has a still imperfect feel. <laughs> and that that all the, the trio's all just taking shots until like dawn isn't the most like oh they got their shit together. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I think this is a different Gene Kelly character because he's not great in everyone's eyes, not not just yours. <laughs> Um, I just I would like to have seen a Gene Kelly film where he went after something and didn't get it. Like that that would be interesting to me at this point. Is is it maybe like is his personality? Because like you never thought that way for like a a like a Cary Grant film, right? Well, no. Well, actually, yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I I think Cary Grant's a way better actor, but. Oh, yeah. Which probably saved it a little bit. I mean, you can be the leaning man, you can be the charming guy, you can be the good-looking guy, but you you also have to be able to deliver catharsis and pathos. I have to buy into you. You have to check off certain boxes that I think Cary Grant does and does honestly in a lot of his films. Like we talked about Philadelphia Story on here. J- Jimmy Stewart. Well, yeah. Jimmy Stewart's the guy you want her to end up with, but mm-hmm. because Cary Grant's in the movie, she's going to end up with Cary Grant. And and I get that, and that to me that's kind of just old Hollywood bullshit. I don't want to punish Gene Kelly because he's great looking, and um, you know people cast him as a leading man. I want to punish Gene Kelly because I think he's a terrible actor, mm-hmm. and I think that he he got by on stuff, he got by on God given talent in other areas, and kind of hammed in and phoned in his acting ability. There's someone out there screaming right now. I think Gene, Gene Kelly's an incredible actor. You know, it's a matter of taste. What well, I see when I see yeah. him, I cannot see the character. I, I, I see Gene Kelly, and 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 I would argue that, like, don't think for a second that that isn't what they were wanting you to see. They want you to see Gene Kelly. That's what the movies are about. They're about oh, Gene well, Kelly. And, and we that, were so close to doing... And so Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, Sachin to Rogers. But I was worried that we wouldn't be able to have a different, like, half-hour take on each of the films. All of them are lovely. I haven't watched them all. But but all those end with them falling in love and getting together. Right. Well, the, 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 there's, no, there's no real horrible ending for well, a Fred Astaire I film. To, I was trying to think, like, you know, what other what other actor, you know, there's someone we've covered or whatever that's that's had that, that you can make that argument, oh, they were the same thing, so why are you being so harsh on Gene Kelly? The answer is Charlie Chaplin. That was the same character in every film. You saw Charlie Chaplin. You didn't see the other characters. But the difference with those the, that, as opposed to Gene Kelly, is their plots weren't so paper thin. They, they, they all every every time the characters moved somewhere or went somewhere, it was always delivered honestly. These were it felt it felt real, and I'm able to remove myself from it. This the plots are not that great. Mm-hmm. The, the stories simply just aren't that good. 
When you have to insert a 30-minute dance sequence in, then if you can break away from the action that long to do that, that means that whatever we were breaking away from probably wasn't that good, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of the thing here. I thought this had a very, very interesting beginning. I thought that it had an okay ending. I thought with wrapping up with the guys, I didn't think the girl should have been there, but why couldn't he just call her on the payphone or something? It just seemed weird that she literally showed up at that bar. I mean, did he tell her she was, he was going there? I don't know. Well, she knew the story. Uh, she knew, okay, yeah, that's right, she knew the story. Um, but it just, when it wanted to be about those guys, I thought it was good. That's when the dancing was the best. Not a lot of dancing in this film, actually. That's when the dancing yeah. was the best. That's when the, the songs were the best. Um, that's when the plot was the best. When it removes away from those guys, and it just becomes Gene Kelly walking around the city, and he's boxing promoter and all this other stuff. I just couldn't care less about it. I thought her solo number was a ton of fun. Her solo number is her solo number is really good, I think, in and of itself. Um I think it's, it's like a short film. It's like a short film, right. Because it's, cool. it's so well filmed. It is. And in 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 Shin Kelly movies, that's that's never been a problem. He makes things look really pretty. He's like the Kurosawa of like musical uh, sets. I don't know how he controls so much of that shit. So I think he's an underappreciated director. I, I rank him as a dancer, director, actor. Yeah. Uh, for my my Gene Kelly. Yeah, actor's got to be way down at the bottom. Uh, yeah. But I, I like he just is so impressive with the the camera. And this one to me is like, man, I wish this didn't kind of kill his career because. Is it that, I think it's weird that this killed his career. I will say that. Well, I mean, also there were some issues because he co-directed a number of these films with Stanley Donen, who was getting his own success. I mean, he directed some films by himself, like Seven Brides, Seven Brothers, mm-hmm. huge hit. They Better fought. Movie. They, it is. They fought creatively, like crazy in this film, and they never like talked again after this, like as people. So, uh, yeah, Gene, Gene Kelly afterwards kind of he, he didn't make that many films afterwards. I mean, he directed. Well, we'll talk about it in the bonus episode, yeah. but. No, he. Uh, this is kind of his last kind of big uh, yeah. thing, and I think it, in terms of him ending on a big studio note, it's super interesting. And what's especially odd is that this film was a giant inspiration for a film I love that I don't think you've seen yet. Um, he has five now. We can't do an Edgar Wright five, <laughs> um, but he made a a sci fi film called The World's End, which is about uh, five high school friends basically reunited to do a a pub crawl they couldn't complete. And all of them have all become adults, and one of them is just so stuck back at like high school. It's the best years of my life, and he still dressed the same way, at the same car. Oh, and aliens invade. And, but it's, it's that movie hits the themes of this story and sticks with it scene to scene a lot better than this musical. So in many ways, this is a great double feature of well, two extremely interesting ways to do a really really big genre for a very very small uh, emotion. Yeah, things. Get obscured really quickly after the first twenty five minutes. I, I oh, this one, yes. yeah, this <laughs> one. I just don't. At the end of the day, I don't know. I don't even know what every character's motivation is in the, any given scene. Um, it's kind of a mess. But I feel like forty minutes of this movie is really are, is really good. I think there's like a solid beginning twenty five, and then some a smattering of things. I like the, the number where they're all three dancing in three different places. is mm-hmm. great. Again, I never have a problem with the dancing. Yeah. Um, but good news is, non spoiler, I like the movie next week. That is the biggest tease we can give. <laughs> so, well, I'm not going to hate every movie. On this, there we I go. Promise. So, next week, we are going to be reviewing The Young Girls Rush Fort. Um, if you have thoughts about It's Always Fair Weather, be sure to go to artmore.com. While you're there, you can check out some other cool things like. Uh, the podcast The Immortals. We just had episode 98 come up yesterday where we reviewed the absolutely beautiful film Wings of Desire and the Danish version of The Killing. Ad Absurdum is coming out soon. We promise that a bit of a technical delay, but the Inception episode is coming out. I'm excited to hear it. And uh, where else can we hear you? Constant Aversions YouTube channel. They know that by now, I think. I, I, yeah, 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 tell them. Yeah. Every episode is someone's first episode. Oh, probably. Okay. That's right. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We will start with. <laughs> Uh, also follow us on Twitter at the Immortals Pod. Lee is very fun there. So next week, um, Jacques Demy's uh, French film. You can check it out on Films Truck and other places. We hope to catch you then. I'm Austin Luger. I'm Eric Martindale. Bye everyone. Bye bye. Well, Ted, how about you? Law school in the political arena? Oh, the Midtown arena is about the only arena I know. Uh, which reminds me, I have to get up to Stillman's gym later and look at my fighter. Racketeers in a fight game, huh? Glad I'm in a respectable business. I 
shouldn't have come. I shouldn't have come. This thing's a mistake. An awful mistake. That guy's such a snob. And who is that hick? Can these be the guys I once thought I could never live without? Uh, who do you think will win the World Series? Oh, well, uh, both teams look pretty good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, may the best team win. This thing is a frost. I'd like to get lost. Old pals are the bunk. This guy's a cheap punk. And that one's a heel. And I'm a slamil. Can these be the guys I once thought I could never live without? This thing's a bad dream. Why can't I just scream? Ah! Oh, why did I fly to New York from Shy to drink scotch at noon with a hick and a goon? Can these be the guys I once thought I could never live without? This guy is a punk, a punk, a punk. This guy is a snob, a snob, a snob. This guy is a dope, a hick, a square. I shouldn't have come, I'm in despair. Our dreams are dusting down the drain. Singers are bust, and I'm insane. Oh, why did I come? Why am I here? I hate the square, I stop a punk. 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 